and we are ready to go on a beautiful Saturday evening here on ESPN. Triton's coming off the most recent win, a huge win for them against UC Davis. That's a UC Davis team that is in the Big West tournament, and they were able to come away with a 1-0 win out on the road, which has been big for their growth. Yeah, and, and to be honest, you look at a team like UC Irvine, and they've kind of had a bit of a down season, and they came into this season with a little bit of high hopes, but didn't start the way they would have liked. I think they started with, I don't know, two ties and seven losses, and They've turned it around a little bit during conference play, and, and now they find themselves in the Big West tournament. And, you know, you can win three games from, from there, and, heck, you might find yourself inside the NCAA tournament. So um, all that early season struggles could change. And that is crazy when you look at the actual numbers, as there's a little collision between Cerrito and one of the center backs for UC Irvine, who is a little slow to get up. You look at the numbers, and UC Irvine didn't win a single game in the non-conference. They only have four total wins on the season. They could have seven wins overall and somehow make their way into the tournament. Yeah, and, and usually if you're an at-large bid, you, you have to have somewhat of a winning record. and So that's not the route they can take, uh, just like a lot of teams. But, heck, they can find themselves, yeah, in the tournament as long as they can win their tournaments game, just like the NCAA tournament. You might not have the best conference, regular season, but if you're somehow able to win that conference tournament, you'll find yourself in the the big tournament. And the record didn't look good, but UC Irvine also played an incredibly hard non-conference schedule, so not winning, of course, is not what you set out for, but credit to Yossi Raz who take a look at the most recent foul, already a physical game early, that one on Allen. And credit Yossi Raz in his fifth season with the Anteaters that he does schedule those kind of non-conference schedules like he does every year. Yeah, and their schedule was tough. And uh, what I will say, uh, uh, you know, to top of that is UCSD also had a very, very tough schedule. They play a few ranked opponents, and they were able to get out of conference play with a really good record. And credit to UCSD Tritons and only in their second year in Division I soccer. They've really had a, a really fun year to watch, and the growth has been amazing. It's, you know, unfortunate that they're not able – being that it's their only second year in, in Division One, they're not able to actually be in the conference tournament. And if they were, this game would have huge parameters. I mean, if they win this game, that would propel them into the top six, which would then give them a decent little seed heading into the tournament. And it has been a huge growth from year one to year two. Mention that they sit in seventh right now, currently in the Big West. So a win today would move them up above the number six line. So that's something that you can sell back to your team if you're Coach Pascal, that hey, two years from now, we'd be playing in a tournament to have a chance to play in the big tournament. Yeah, and it's a, a sign of relief for, for the Ant Eaters because they'd be the ones that they'd be contesting to be in that final spot. So Ant Eaters are getting away with something right now. They're 4-3-1, they're and one, so they're a little bit ahead of UC San Diego. But again, a win tonight would put them above the Ant Eaters. For UC Irvine, they are coming off a most recent draw against Santa Barbara, which is the team that will most likely finish top of the table in the Big West. They also beat CSUN on Saturday. That was a big 2-1 win. And then beat Bakersfield 2-1 last Wednesday. So riding a little bit of a high coming into the match. 2-0-1 in the last three. And 4-3-1 and overall in the conference. So they're looking to finish strong before they head into the tournament. Yeah, and how big was that tie against Santa Barbara? That was a, a postponed game that was made up a few weeks later and yeah that tie is going to prove to be huge because you look at Sac State who just lost recently and, and brought their record to four and five and had they not got that tie they'd be coming to this game four and four and I'm not sure what their matchup is head to head but they'd be tied on record if UCSD is able to get a win tonight. There were seeds up in the air before coming into today but Sac State played an early match against UC Davis and lost so that pushes them now four and five in the conference and below the line that will be needed to get in. So all the teams are set, just where will they end up today? And that is why today is so interesting. Here's a big switch of the field as the Anteaters have held a good amount of possession to start the match as we normally see, but Triton's able to get out and counter. Looking to head up the line with Valverde who's had a very good second half of this season. Working the left side, this is Montilla. Get 
Cervantes looking to get through a couple of defenders as means. In that most recent match for UC San Diego against Irvine, it was a Carter Jacoba's 57th minute goal. That was a game the Tritons were outshot 12 to two in, and they were able to hold their ground. Dominic Peters obviously was great in that match holding to a clean sheet, but as normal, a goal against the run of play for UC San Diego proved to be the winner. Yeah, and UC San Diego continues their, their great away record, right? Early in the season, they were getting a lot of wins at home, and as this conference play has rolled on, they've been able to get some road wins, so it's been nice to see that growth, and they've kind of started to tick all the boxes this season. They've, I think they've done what they've wanted to do. I mean, certainly, you know, you'd want more wins, you'd want this, you'd want that, but if you really look at the program as a whole, they've taken a lot of good steps forward in this year, too. They'll keep a good group of players. They will lose eight seniors who were honored today, but they will keep a really good group of players coming in. And now that you are a Division I team, you're starting to get more and more of the Division I recruits in, and that could really turn the tables as you do head in a couple years towards being postseason eligible. Yeah, and as much as all these eight seniors are going to be a huge loss, they were on the team when this team was a top team in Division II, and it just goes to show you the talented players they had in Division II that they were able to step right in the Division I level and, and straight away produce and be depended on and trusted by Coach John Pascal. Alessandro Allen has been starting up top with Nick Cerrito. That seemed to be the combination Coach Pascal has liked now because he's rode with them the majority of the end of the season. A couple different combinations up top we've seen this year. We've seen Carvalho and Allen. We've seen Carvalho and Cerrito. But it looks like this Alessandro Allen and Cerrito is stuck. Yeah, and obviously, senior night, I'm sure Coach John Pascal, if he was going to make a change, probably wouldn't be on senior night where Alessandro Allen and Nick Cerrito could be playing their last college soccer game. Speaking of somebody who's going to play their last college soccer game, there's Dominic Peters, who has been the rock for this team so far this season. Transfer originally from Wake Forest. He brought some Division One experience when he came to the program, and that has shown throughout his two years here. Yeah, what a college career he's brought to UCSD they needed a guy in goal that has had that D1 experience that could lead the team and older player as well he's done brilliantly and especially in the system that coach Pascal plays where a lot is important for your back line and goalkeeper to hold up not a lot getting forward a lot of times especially through the transition to division one so he's absorbing a lot of shots and a lot of pressure day in and day out and he's really stood the task Dan, on top of that, he's someone that's dealt with a ton of injuries this season, his back, his knee. That's why at times you have seen backup keeper Nick Shore come in and a few other keepers as well. So credit to him, he's been able to last all season. Probably needs a break after this, that's for sure, <laughs> but he's done well and been able to get through it. Good footwork by Alessandro Allen to get out of pressure. And we'll see how Irvine approaches this game. You mentioned they do have seating on the line, but it is their last regular season game as well with their spot locked in. They've been gaining some momentum of late, but once again will be another good test. And there really hasn't been one team in the Big West that hasn't been a test for UC San Diego and likewise for Irvine. Every team you walk in this conference can beat you. Yeah, and I think the records show that. A ton of games that are decided by one goal, a few ties, and when you only play nine conference games, I mean, all it takes is one win at a certain moment, and it'll catapult you into either the top three or the bottom three with a loss. So every game certainly matters a lot when you're playing in a conference that's that tight. This is Ricardo Ibarra. He plays on the left side for Coach Yossi Raz. So Irvine team that doesn't score much, only 16 goals for this season, have conceded 29. A lot of those, yes, did come in the non-conference. But only 16 goals on the season. Not a high-scoring Anteater team. Not a high-scoring UC San Diego team either. So goals should be at a premium tonight, and we should see some good structured football here. Yeah, UCSD always playing very structured football in a traditional 4-4-2 that likes to sit back. They've been recently showing that they can possess the ball a little bit more than 
maybe the prototypical John Pascal team. But I think, again, when you talk about the growth and where the team is headed, I, I think that's probably what he had to do year one, where you're sitting around a team that has 40% possession. You sit back, you counter, you're well organized. Now you're starting to see that number creep up a little bit, maybe start to get around 45. You know, and, and actually later in the season, it's been where they've sometimes outpossessed teams. And so I think that's something eventually they'll get to where they want to start to dominate games and put games on their terms. But you have to start somewhere. It's not just a snap of the fingers. It comes with the recruiting. It comes with, you know, building the program in Division One to be able to find the players that you can get to that level. Looking to get forward there was Alessandro Allen who has been all over the ball a lot this season. He'll be a player that'll be missed here at UC San Diego. Has really been their guy in the middle that can possess the ball, hold the ball up at times, really absorb a lot of this kind of pressure. Yeah, and even though his numbers haven't really stood out crazy this season, he's just been a leader. I mean, when you talk to Coach John Pascal, and they talk about players that are difference makers on this team with the ball and, and someone that has that it factor. They, they talk about Alessandro Allen a lot and, and that's why they love having him in the lineup and that's why they've actually moved him a little bit higher up the pitch into a more goal scoring area because although he's a playmaker they, they need a little bit more from that up front area. And the two games he missed this season due to injury they could definitely feel his presence not there so it was nice to have him back and up the pitch a little bit higher as you were saying Sal to make that kind of an impact. Started his career here at UC San Diego is more of a traditional midfielder, and now he's moved a little higher up. He certainly has, and he's combined well with whoever he's really partnered up with. Early on, it was Max Carvalho a lot. Now, obviously, a player that he's had a lot of experience in, Cerrito. But they're they're a pretty deep team, UC San Diego, and here you see a good chance. And Cross to the middle, Allen looked to pick out Hobrick, and just like that, creating something. Yeah, and what a lovely play that would have been just to tap that in to, to get a goal. I mean, everything was done right. The overlap, the through ball, the cross, just needed to get that crashing run, runner in for the Tritons, and that would have capped off what maybe would have been the, one of the prettiest goals they've scored all season. And that just comes down to getting to the ball first. Yeah, and, and credit, obviously, to to the Anteaters defender there for, for getting back, and those are tough situations where you could get got ball watching a lot, and he was able to get first to the ball and keep the ball out of his own net. Now the Anteaters will look to get out on offense. This is Montilla. Creating a little bit of space is Ibarra. Looked to put one on target, but it was well over the top. But you like the chances that you've seen early from UC San Diego. Yeah, they've looked like the better team. There, There's that lovely through ball. And really, it's a great cross, but just couldn't get, Hobrick just couldn't get in front of that defender. Ricardo Ibarra there. Ibarra started all 17 matches so far this season. He's one of three anteaters to start each and every match. Kenworthy and Chata, the other ones. Chata not in the starting 11 here tonight. So now just Ibarra and Kentworthy. Valverde looks to put some pressure right in front of that corner flag. He's had a really good second half of the season. The transfer from UCLA. Didn't see much from him in the first half, but he's really come alive now with three goals and two assists. Yeah, he's someone that has earned a lot more playing time, and you can certainly see him as a starter on the field next year. Scored some big goals when UCSD has needed it the most. Looking to get through a maze of defenders as Montanillo. Cerrito. Started the season on the bench to Nick Cerrito has since moved into the starting 11. He was a starter all of last year as well. Leads the team with four goals, one assist on the season. When the goal scoring was at a premium, he was one guy that you could always look at up top to create. Yeah, he's always going to battle, and that's someone obviously they'll, they'll miss. Mac Carvalho is still a very young player, and Definitely has a bright future, and they're going to look for him. And you're going to see him later in this game, but they're going to look for him to really take a, a leap forward next season and 
really do everything that he already does, but on top of anything, they need him to score some goals and, and become more of a finisher. And we'll see, that's up to Max Carvalho. He certainly has the talent. Sitting on three goals a season from Carvalho. He scored early in the season, then went on a long drought of not scoring before he put two in the back of the net in the same game. So definitely more consistent scoring needed from Carvalho in the future up top. Yeah, I mean, look, if, if you're a center forward for, for a team that plays 15, 16 games in a season, you, you'd want more than just scoring in two games, right? And, and he'll be the first one that would probably say that. So, But when you watch him play, look, he battles, he fights hard, he, he does all. Like I said, everything it's right. not for lack of effort when yeah, you talk about Carvalho. Just, it's just scoring goals that he can get better at. And Hobrick. Look at the wheels from Hobrick. Ends up losing the ball. No foul call. Tracking back very far was Ibarra. But Hobrick looking to turn on the Jets. That's the first time I've really seen Hobrick kind of open off. one up this season. And there's a big time tackle from Serpa there. Serpa never afraid of a challenge there. Big tackle that... Drew a nice celebration from his crowd on senior day. He had a pretty big crowd out here. And now it gives them something to cheer about. Yeah, Serpa going in hard. Critical and clean. Yeah, and, and I get a sense that these seniors, that this game means something, right? I mean, UC Irvine is, because of the result for Sac State, they're in the, the Big West tourney, so they're already maybe looking forward to it a lot of a lot of pressure off of them for this game but you see san diego in the early going is really taking it to them and it almost looks like they're playing with nothing to lose because really they do i mean for a lot of them it's their last game in their career so after this one it's all over so you you, you can get a sense of that i think there there's a lot of pride in this game and they're not playing with so much pressure leave it all out on the field it's the only thing you can do, and they've done that so far here today. There's another one, Noah Sonnenstein, also playing in his last game. It's been the heart and soul of that back line all season long in his entire career here at UC San Diego, so he'll be one they'll miss as well. Yeah, actually, and, and I think he might be the key in, in the the big player that they'll lose because for him, he, he's the leader, he's the captain, and he's just like, he, he's the guy that you can always count on from that center back spot to get the job done and and to rally the troops and sometimes it's not always you know the flashiest player or even the best player on the pitch but it's the one that players look to who battles through injuries who you can count on to be on the field and he's a vocal leader he's very good in the air he's a fighter and, that, and that's someone they're gonna miss we saw a fight from him earlier in the season where he went out with an injury at halftime and then sean mcdonald subbed in for noah sonnenstein but then picked up an injury with three and a half left, and Noah came right off the bench, saw the last three and a half minutes out with an injured knee. Yeah, it looked like he had a bit of a dead leg that game, and if anyone's ever had those, the, once they tighten up and once you're sitting on the bench for quite a while, you can hardly walk that day and the next day, and sometimes if, you know, all the way up to a week. So for him to be able to step up in an important three minutes to see that game out and secure that win just goes to show you the person he is, the personality he is. It's He's almost like the Puyol was to Barcelona <laughs> or the Draymond Green is to the Golden State Warriors. That fighting mentality that, again, isn't the, you're not the best player on the pitch, but you're maybe the important piece that that's puts it all together. You yeah. can't teach. You just have that. And Noah Sonnenstein for sure has that. Yeah, for sure. And I think that that's what they're going to miss the most, and they have to find that player that can replace that. Poor first touch by the Anteaters will land the ball on the foot of Mason Hobrick, who will play back to Sonnenstein. This is Serpa. Kind of pretty evenly matched game so far. Triton's probably had the best chance of the game where Hobrick almost was able to put one in the back of the net. So through the first 20, nothing doing on the score sheet for either side as Hobrick looks across this one all the way across, but finds itself out of play. There's an anteater down right at the edge of the 18. A referee today, Sean Wright, will call out the trainer. Looks as if that's Nolan DeCenzo. I 
was actually Oscar Cervantes who's down, number 16 in pinstripes. Helping him out there is Ibarra before the trainers come out. And, you know, typically when a player goes down, kind of grabbing the back of his calf, if it's, you know, the 70 minutes on, you're, you're thinking, okay, it could just be a cramp. He's just getting through it. But, look, it's a 25th minute. It, it could mean something more. And if I'm a, the trainer or the coach for the Anteaters, I'm saying, you know, it doesn't really make sense to risk this, again, as you're going into the Big West tournament. And all it would take is three games, and they can get to the NCAA tournament, which is really the – the goal for a lot of teams at the beginning of the year to get into that tournament. But I think they're playing this smart. And Oscar Cervantes, a junior from Indio. Started 16 of 17 matches coming into today. Has one assist on the season. He's a staple at center back. Played for the LA Galaxy Academy before making his way to UC Irvine. So hopefully everything is okay with him and he can continue because he will be important in their postseason run. Yeah, I think the goal now is to just get him ready with all eyes on that game. Might have been a calf or, or hamstring, something on the back of his leg that maybe just felt tweak and tighten up there. As Cervantes comes out, looks to be like coming off the bench. Samuel Ataya. Ataya getting ready to come on the field. And while he does, we'd like to remind you the UC San Diego Health reminding you that open enrollment is your time to evaluate your health care options for the upcoming year. Consider choosing a plan that gives you access to the top ranked care at UC San Diego Health, the only academic health system in San Diego. Learn more at getbettercarenow.com. Hopefully Oscar Cervantes gets better care over there on the sideline as he'll come out of the match momentarily for Ataya. He'll take over kind of at that center back holding midfield role that pushes back Kenworthy into a more defensive center back role. Ataya from Dusseldorf, Germany, sophomore. So definitely experienced in the German game and see how he does as he's Looks like he's slotting in as that holding midfielder number six role. Taya, one goal, one assist to his name in his sophomore year. Have you heard of SSVG Velbert 2, the club he played for? <laughs> the two, I'm, I'm sure, is the second team. I'm, I'm not too familiar with that professional team. I'm not sure if they're in the, you know, Regional Liga, which would be the fourth league, or the Oberliga, which would be the fifth division in, in Germany. Sorry, you're a big Bundesliga one player. No, I actually. Or you were two at the time. I was, uh, I was, I was, my team, Hanover 96, was in the Bundesliga, but I spent a lot of time playing with Hanover's second team. And at that moment, we were in the, yes, Regional Liga, which then became the tier three Bundesliga three, so. A lot of tears over there in Europe. Yeah, there is. And in Germany, I, when I was there my first year, they were just making that Division Three. So a lot of those fourth division teams were trying to become the third Bundesliga, and a lot of those fifth division teams were trying to become the fourth Bundesliga. So it was a, it was a wild time. But I just remember after my, my first year in Germany, I was all packed up, ready to come home, and <laughs> they told me I had to go play with Hanover second team to help them qualify for the – Fourth division, then regional Liga. So, and we were able to do it. So, I was gonna say, did you help? We we were. I was, was able to win a few key games at the end of that season and help their second team. Yeah, which obviously in turn helps the development for that club and, and moving forward. So, when they made it to Bundesliga one a couple of years ago, that was because of you. No, no, <laughs> they they were in Bundesliga one for quite a while before me. They've actually slipped down now to the the second Bundesliga, but they're having a good year. I think they're in the top five or six. So. There's a possibility to to hopefully uh, go back into the first league, but one of their top alumni, Steve Trundolo, who you know they called the mayor of Hanover, uh, was my teammate. Played in Hanover for I don't know 15 season, has around 400 Bundesliga games, an American, actually from 
San Diego area, and um, now he's the head coach at LAFC, who is playing against Austin FC in the semifinals of the MLS, so all comes full circle. Tying it together. Yes, it does. A couple substitutions for UC San Diego. Carvalho will see his first action for Cerrito. And we'll also get the first look for Jack Hagen here today. He'll come in for Alessandro Allen. Here's a set piece for the Anteaters. Played right through the box and right out of play for a goal kick. So nothing doing there on that set piece on the foul drawn by Atoya. We'll also see Alan Kim and Carter Jacobus for the first time today. So here comes the line change substitutions for the Tritons. Jacobus, the hero from the last match, 57th minute goal. Nice to see Jack Hagen, who's been battling a little bit of injury, get back out there. Alan Kim, always a spark plug on the wing. Got some of those underclassmen coming in now. Guys that will carrying the torch from these seniors after this game. And there you see the energy already from uh, Max Carvalho. He's playing up top now with Hagen. So they'll sit up top as the true forwards. Kim will be on the right with Kawamura and Ewan Clark in the center. Carter Jacobus will take his spot on the left. Still same back line with Gibson and Serpa on the outside. Sonestine and Walker, the two center backs. Here's Serpa, approaching 21 minutes left to go in the first half. Still no score between the Anteaters and the Tritons. Long ball looked to play over the top. Walker let it slide over his head and he'll find Dominic Peters. Peters with four clean sheets on the season. His most recent one coming against UC Davis. But before he's able to play it long, we have a stoppage. And the anteater coming off the pitch is Jake Means making his way over to UC Raz. Fifth season at the helm of UC Irvine. Previously coached at Cal Poly Pomona, who is Coach Pascal and the Tritons are very familiar with from their time in Division II, the CCAA. UC Raz, a very good player in the Big West. Came over to the Big West as a head coach in 2018 and immediately won Big West Coach of the Year. Also won that award in 2021 as well. He'll have to make a substitution or allow Jake Means to get patched up. It looks like it may be blood the issue for Jake Means. Does he not look like Pep Guardiola, by the way? He does. He's got some nice style to him as well. So he Plays the part. For sure. For <laughs> sure. But yeah, Yossi Raz, a very good coach now. 38 wins in total at his time with UC Irvine. And one thing he does do, as we mentioned, he sacks his non-conference schedule, likes it seem to be tested, maybe to fall a little too much this season, and a little more his anti team can handle. But they're always a really good in-conference team. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's that's smart because, look, if, if you're – say your goal is to enter in the NCAA tournament at the end of the year, if they're able to – get some big time wins that's going to look good for your record and if you don't well look you still have the conference that you're probably going to have to do well in anyway so it'll give you a chance in the tournament for the big west to, to then get in so it almost gives you two ways if you don't play anyone in the non-conference those those wins really don't mean anything so even if your record is you know 15 2 and 1 i mean if they're all against teams that aren't even in the top 100 then Committee's going to look at that and say, well, you didn't beat anyone and your conference schedule was, you know, five and two. It's not really going to get you in at an at large bid. So I think it's smart. You play, play the best, test your team, and then go from there, really. See the set piece sent in by Kyle Mora. It was a foul as going up with the goalkeeper was Sonnenstein. Yeah. Can't touch the goalie. Yeah, Kyle Mora just got under that. He needs to hit that a little bit more driven. Sonnenstein. Really didn't do much, just kind of got drifted into the keeper there. Hagen does well to intercept that pass. Here's Carvalho, who's on his off left foot. Would have maybe liked him to have that first time, put some on target, but he's attempting to get back to his more favorable right. But that's the kind of pressure that Jake, Jack Hagen brings 
can get those dangerous spots. And right there, uses long legs to pick off the ball. Yeah, lovely little quick pass with the outside of his right too. If Carvalho can maybe just keep that first touch underneath him, then he can make a decision on whether to go right or left. He kind of takes that in stride, and it makes the decision easy for the center back to, to know where he's going. Another easy decision was that foul as Ibarra is fouled. Captain for this UC Irvine team. Junior out of San Jose, played for the San Jose Earthquakes Academy. Looks like he is up and okay. Last year, UC Irvine did make it to the Big West Championship where they lost to Santa Barbara, but it was the same situation for the Anteaters. 8-8-4 eight, eight, and four overall in the season, 6-1-2 and two in the Big West. Ended up making it to the final. You're one game away from beating Santa Barbara and finding your way in. Yeah, and, and obviously Santa Barbara, with their track record, is one of the few teams that, you know, could essentially get in that large bid regardless. Obviously, they have to have a good season and in that and whatnot, but they're a top team in this country. They're a top program, and so as long as they have a winning record and have some put some wins together, they're usually a team that gets an at-large bid if they don't win the Big West, which obviously they're more often than not slated to win the Big West every season going into the year. Santa Barbara 4-0-4 four, oh, four this season atop the Big West. Right beside them is UC Riverside 4-2-2. Two, and, two. and you look at the teams at the top of this list. We watch UC Riverside here as Carvalho to go one on three with a bunch of anti dirt defenders. But staying on that topic, when you look at the top of the list for the Big West, you got a UC Riverside team that Triton's hung with the whole time. You have UC Davis team in third that they beat, a CSUN team that you lost to on a game on a late winner. Those are the top teams in the conference where you could easily have won each and every one of those games. Yeah, you're you're definitely right there. And and realistically, there were two games at home that they feel like they should have won. Yes, there were a few road wins where. You know, those weren't the easiest, and, and maybe it all evens out. But look, if they were able to win those two home games, their record would be 6-2, and two, and, and they'd be really second place in, in this conference. So they're right there. They're just missing that final piece, and I think that final piece is just being able to score when they really need a goal. Their, their defensive structure has been excellent. You know, their team cohesion has been excellent. They just haven't put together that last part, which... This is the hardest part about soccer is scoring goals. I mean, that's why the fours get paid the big bucks, right? I mean, it's the hardest part is scoring goals and at the highest level. And the college level isn't easy. And if they're able to find a few players or if a few players next season are able to grow into that role, like a Max Carvalho, like a Valverde or Jacobus, if they can each, you know, put a little bit more on, on the statistics score sheet, uh, I think they're, they're headed in the right direction. And it's, it will be interesting to see how that develops. And in your personal opinion, is that more a systematic thing or is that getting a player? I, I think a little bit of both, right? I mean, I've said all season long, players that are good are able to, regardless of the system, you're gonna need to beat a player from time to time. You're gonna need. There's real dangerous here. opportunity for the Anteaters today. A lot of blue jerseys in the area. And the final big block came from Adam Walker, well done to stop that danger. Probably the dangerous, most dangerous attack by the Anteater so far here today. Yeah, and I mean, and it can be done both ways, as I was saying. I mean, of course, the system of play is is, is huge, but you also got to play with what you're given and, and the certain talent level of the players around you. So I think it's definitely one goes with the other, and it's, it's very hard to, to have one and not the other. Jacobus gets stood up but then crossed it to the middle, looking to pick out Alan Kim. It's not the biggest target in the middle when you're looking at a cross, but always dangerous on the backside. A good tackle there by Kawamura. It goes out of play off of an anteater. It'll be a throw in for the Tritons, but first, a substitution. So Cooper Lockenbrook will be his first look, no pun intended, of the game. Gets a big cheer. Also celebrating his senior day here tonight. Lockenbrook yet to score this season. Maybe today's the day. Yeah, I think you might have actually just called that now that you said he hadn't scored this season. Maybe off a long throw from Max Carvalho. Maybe in the th 
14 minutes left to go in the first half. This is bounced in the middle. Come away and put a big foot through. It was a Taya. Here's Walker. Played all the way back to safety to the feet of Dominic Peters. Peters solid in all aspects of the game. His feet, obviously his goal-saving ability. Here comes Serpa. Serpa's able to keep that one before it goes out for a corner and out to Hagen. Hagen did not see that Irvine player on his backside who comes over, over to clear it away. Here's Sonnenstein. Big switch of the field looking to link with Gibson. Jacobus comes to assist as Gibson blows right by his defender and looks to play Carvalho through. Not on the same page there as Carvalho is checking. Gibson is looking to play a through ball. But here's Lockenbrook. Hard cross looking to find Kim, but cutting it off was Ibarra. Headed up the left side, this is Montanil. Montanil will play it back and now finds the feet of the captain, Ibarra. Irvine looking to grab hold of the match after there were a couple testy minutes. Switching the field to play is Senzo. And now Lockenbrook has it. Lockenbrook, a couple good touches since coming into the match. And here's a through ball to the speedy Jack Hagen. Couple Tritons head into the box. Ball looking to find Carvalho. He's tackled. Jacobus looked to come in late, but it's cleared away. Kim pressures Ibarra in the corner, and the anteriors will switch play and get out of danger. Yeah, and the pressure is the right move. It's just too late, uh, I think. You know, the, the part about counter pressing is as soon as you lose that ball, you got to go. And right there, there was three UCSD players that just really let them out of a situation that the anteater shouldn't have been able to get out of. But you like the Triton to get out on the break, and Jack Hagen really creating a lot. Yeah, Hagen with a good ball there. Actually, that deflection from the center back. May have been the difference. That's DeCenzo just getting a late heel on it. Yeah, it might have slowed it down just enough to maybe give actually Carvalho a chance, but it's a good tackle by Barr on the backside. Made a few key tackles defensively. Solid in the back, that's why he wears that captain's armband. Here comes a set piece opportunity from the ante. It's a good ball whipped right through the six yard box. It's hung around and put in the back of the net. And that's a difference right now that I've noticed. It's, it's a good goal, I mean, and it all starts with how great of a ball that is. It just, he whips that in into a dangerous area and the UCSC defender's not ready for it. Just comes off his thigh and falls into a perfect spot here. But that's the ball. Vicenzo is able to just fight through Sonnenstein, but you're right, Sal. The ball played in low and hard and really put Serp in a compromised position where it just caught him. Yeah, I, I'm not sure he thought that that ball was going to get through. He maybe thought Sonnenstein was going to win the header or or whatnot, but you always got to kind of assume that it's going to get through and just caught him off guard. And These are the kind of things, right, that have happened to UC San Diego, and this is the type of things that hopefully they can grow from, but stuff like this is, is never easy to grow from. I mean, look, the, if they end this season with a four and five conference record and a regular season just below 500, you'd say that's a pretty good season for a team that's only in their second year in Division One. but I know Coach John Pascal wants more, and Every year is going to be a battle. I mean, there might be a season 10 years from now where they might revert to a record back like this, and that's why college soccer is so difficult, and it's going to be hard to, to take a step forward next season, even though, you know, you put so much into this program and you're growing year after year consistently, and I think that's the, the goal for Coach John Pascal is to improve at least for the first four seasons and really try to get them ready to make a run in the Big West tournament when they're finally able to do it. And each and every team that's come in 
to UC San Diego this season and said, this is an incredibly tough team to play against. And that's credit to how hard the team plays and the system Coach Pascal has put together. And when all of a sudden that comment from those teams are hard to play to be like, this team is actually hard to beat, that's when all of a sudden you look at the big step and you're like, wow, they're a top team. Yeah, I mean, and, and you see it on the field. They're in every game. There's no doubt about that. And is there improvement from last season? Certainly. And, and so now what's the next step? Is it maybe it's not even that they have a better record. Maybe it's just that they're able to close out, you know, some games, especially conference games that are really close. Are they like a game like this that they've really just been dominating from the, from the start? How did these translate into victories and into wins? in the standings because that's what's going to matter at the end of the day as well as they play as well as they look you know it's a results-based business and and that's what needs to happen the goal for the anteaters you can arguably say is against the run of play so far here today best chances of the match have come to uc san diego but at the end of the day it's uc irvine who's on the board and it's one nil and now you're playing from behind needing goals Alan Kim going to squeeze through a pack of anteater defenders, but a little too heavy on the touch through. Kim has brought a spark to this team in the second half of the year. Him and Valverde really solidifying their spots on the wings. Now you see Kim playing in more of a forward role. Which at first you watch Kim, you thought just maybe he's ventured over there from his right outside midfield role, but it's providing a little bit of pace. Yeah, I, I like, personally, I like him when he's a little bit wider. I, I think he's a better 1v1 player and can kind of go at you a little bit. And So I prefer to see him on the wing, not so much in a role where he switched with Carvalho like he was for a second there. I know that was just temporary, but I think he's at his best when he's able to get wide take a few guys on, use his pace, and whip in some crosses. And it's shown a few times this season when he's when Valverde has been on the other side and getting on the end of some of those crosses. Two assists on the season for Kim. They came in the same match, both to Valverde. Clark gets ahead on it. He's played well in his holding midfield role this season. Hagen looking to provide some pace. But Adaya is able to get to the ball first. Here's Clark tracking back, pokes it to Sonnenstein. Under eight minutes left to go here in the first half from Triton Soccer Stadium. Anteaters looking to hold some possession and take this into the halftime, still with the lead. Yeah, and that goal gave UC Irvine a little bit of confidence, more on top of the ball. They're a little bit, you know, they were rattled at the start for sure, and now they're definitely on the ball, touching it, more confident. Played out wide, this is Mejia. Peters off his line, is able to collect. Three Anteaters who will look to sub in at the next opportunity. Ibarra with a head on it. Atia going to play a little one-two, but ends up losing the ball. If you're Kim, you maybe have to go after that ball and not wait for it to come to you. That would have been a good opportunity for the Tritons. Carvalho tracks back and adds some pressure. Irvine looks to reset up their attack. Long ball played over the top. Finds the head of Adam Walker. Hagen finds Jacobus. Tritons touch it back and forth. 
Hagen never scared for a collision. All over the ball right in front of that Triton bench. And he gets called for the foul. I think his hair makes him look faster, but an incredibly pacey player. And we love the energy that we've seen from Jack Hagen this season. Yeah, and I think he actually had a goal that was called back. That, that would have been a nice set piece a few games ago where he got in and they had called him just offside. So he certainly adds something to the offense and, and certainly off the bench. Hagen on the season, one goal, one assist. Mentioned could have had another, had a goal called back. Local kid from Torrey Pines. And he'll be a fixture with this team. Almost assuming you'll see him in the starting 11 next year. Had moments where he cracked the starting 11 this season. But you like the pace, you like the effort. Really makes an impact going forward for this Triton team that sometimes needs that person to go ahead and get forward. Under five left to go in the first half. Hagen and his Tritons looking to steal a goal back before the halftime whistle. Go into the locker room, all tied up at one. These two teams met for the first time a year ago. It was a two nil win for UC Irvine. A pair of first half goals for the Anteaters. A couple substitutions for UC Irvine. Connor Manning seeing his first action of the match and Isaac Powell, number 25 as well. Isaac Powell is a San Diego native. Attended Motivated Youth Academy and played for the San Diego Surf. Yeah, quite a few San Diegans on the UC Irvine roster and we'll see if one day some of those San Diego kids will stay local at UCSD in the future. It's a competitive recruiting market out here. A lot of good talent. The San Diego club teams between University of San Diego, San Diego State, and UCSD. A lot of good teams out here in the area. And actually, John, Josh Kenworthy, who just played that ball, that center back, he actually spent a little bit of time in the preseason with the San Diego Loyal um, as he was looking to possibly go professional as he was undecided if college was right for him. But he was already committed to the UC Irvine and ultimately ended up going here. And I think he's in his second season now, but also was at the Atlanta United Youth Academy when I was at Atlanta. So I got to talking to him a little bit when he was with the Loyal in uh, preseason in my second year. Local San Diego kid from Del Norte. He's one of the players that started each and every match. This season's really been a fixture in the back line for UC Irvine. Yeah, he's a kid with a bright future and it's not often you see a lot of young players getting that much playing time, especially in the Big West. and Especially at center back. Yeah, at center back in the Big West. So he, But he's a player that's had a lot of experience at at some high levels, and he's certainly one that's gonna look to play beyond his college years. Under two minutes left to go now in the first half. And Noah Desenzo goal has been the difference so far here on a set piece that was just batted around inside the six yard box. Eventually, the center back was able to put it home. See if the Tritons can do anything with the final 90 seconds. Lockenbrook is open if Serpa wanted to use the number eight in navy blue. Inching closer. Here's Kim in the corner. Looking for any space around Kenworthy to play that cross in. Whips a good ball into the box. It goes all the way to Jacobus. Maybe took an extra touch, could have taken a shot. Ewan Clark had a chance to head that in, but it skimmed just over the top of his head. But another dangerous chance for the Tritons. Yeah, and as I said, that's where Alan Kim's at his best, when he's able to just get end line and, and whip in these dangerous balls. And you see if just over the flying head of UCSD, but 
landed at the back post of Jacobus, who ended up not doing enough on the ball. 30 seconds left to go. This is Sonnenstein. Kim was in an offside position, was coming back, didn't play the ball. So no reason to raise the flag. 15 seconds left to go. We'll see if the Tritons push one more time. Walker has it here. Plays to Asa Gibson. There may be an anteater opportunity. That was almost a foul on Gibson. Referee doesn't blow the whistle. Anteater crowd doesn't like that. With only two seconds left, that will indeed end half number one. One final play. Sal, one final thought. Yeah, it's unfortunate for UC San Diego. I thought they've really been the dominant, more dominant team, but it's kind of been the story a little bit in conference with second or even third. So a lot at stake here. As you look at the Tritons not finishing towards the bottom as they were picked in the preseason. That spot is for Cal State Bakersfield. They beat a Cal Poly team, they beat UC Davis. I'll tell you what, a conference is, can't be more jam-packed with that with seven teams that have four wins on the season. And what, if UCSD wins tonight, maybe they, they get to the first one to get to five wins, which would be a feat in itself. You want parity, you find that here in the Big West. We are back underway here in half number two. Teams have switched sides and the Tritons have the ball. It's Walker, Sonnenstein, Serpa and Gibson on the back line. Kawamore and Clark as the two defensive midfielders. Alessandro Allen's back into the match. It's Valverde on the left with Habrick on the right and Cerrito up top. So just as the Tritons started, they run back out here. It's a good sign also to see number 16 in pinstripes, Oscar Cervantes back on the pitch. Remember he came off injured in the first half. So his health obviously is in good standing if they're gonna run him back out there in the second. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I'm not a trainer, but the way he went down, in, in my opinion, maybe he's not worth risking him in, in a second 45, but maybe everything checked out and it was just kind of some weird thing that, that he felt. Uh, but yeah, positive sign to see him back out on the field. Anteater's looking to go in full health on the way to the postseason. This is one in the backside of the box. It's a good save, probably the closest opportunity of the match for UC San Diego is creeping in the back door. Cerrito could have had one. Yeah, Luke Pruder there, what amazing reaction. and Really, that was a perfect set piece. It was a driven ball, you see, unlike some of the balls they had trouble with earlier, where they maybe just were under hitting them or floating them a bit too much. That one was just driven from a distance, and UCSD connected well at the back post, but goalkeeper did an excellent job to really shift his body and get his body in good position to make that save. Luke Pruder only a sophomore goalkeeper. He also has played with the LA Galaxy Academy, originally from Redondo Beach. But probably the best opportunity now of the game before is a Hobrick one now. This set piece. Yeah, just a driven ball from Allen and Cerrito just getting in back post and putting his hands on his head. <laughs> Wondering how that didn't go in. He connected well with it, but Luke Pruder does really well to keep that out. That's almost one of those balls when you're Cerrito, if you go in, you're like, if I just get a foot on it, it's going in the back of the net. Yeah, and that's certainly what he was thinking. Was you're so close to the net. You know, it's a driven ball. You don't have to really put any pressure to this. You just kind of have to stick your leg out and redirect it, and he did that. I mean, he did all you could do. The only thing I would say, maybe that helps in that situation if you try to keep that ball low. If you can try to just hit that into the ground, it's really tough for the keeper to react with their legs when, they, when they're thinking everything with their upper body. So you're taught when balls come into the box, especially with your head to head down on the ball. It's not far off when it comes to your feet either. So Trenton's knocking on the door. Cerrito knocking on the door, which could have been his fifth goal of this season. Said the Tritons will still play from behind. And the center backs connect Adam Walker and Noah Sonnenstein. Good crowd out here on a senior night, Saturday evening. Some Anteater fans have also made their way down from Irvine. Gotten good crowds out here at Triton Soccer Stadium all year long. The support 
for this UC San Diego team has been immense. Yeah, that's something that I don't see changing much. Got a lot of diehard fans, and when I take a peek down, you just see so many fans here that are excited to watch soccer on a Saturday night. It's, it's pretty cool to see as a San Diego native and something that's most likely to continue here at UC San Diego, especially as the program gets better and better. Definitely have embraced their move to Division One. A lot of proud alumni have come out for many games. A lot of proud longstanding fans also. It's not just parents out here. Trains really have a good following. Yeah, and Triton Soccer Stadium getting a brand new makeover on the field. This grass is immaculated as it has been all season, and they're going to look to maintain this beauty on the pitch. I mean, with both men's and women's soccer playing out here, it's still held up really well throughout a full season. You look at a lot of pitches when you get towards the end of the season, they're pretty beat up. Yeah, not I, this I, one. yeah and I would, argue, I would go as far to say as this is probably – one of the top five nicest grass in all of college soccer. And that's not me knowing a lot about <laughs> grass of college soccer. That's just me, you know, walking on this pitch from time to time and, and just looking at it and saying this is a top three MLS pitch. So uh, I would assume that it's, it's a top college soccer pitch as well. Corner for Irvine. Here as Anaya. Number six and pinstripe set to check this one in. About five white jerseys have made their way inside the six yard box. It's a good cross, another well played in ball. Maybe not a well played in shot. And that's a really tough one. Half volley. Yeah, to connect with there from Baroom in there. Hit that off the short hop is very tough to keep that down. But if you hit it cleanly. But if you hit it cleanly, you don't have to swing that hard either. I mean, you saw how that ball just jumped off his foot. Cerritos now tackled. And the trends look to go quickly. Cross into the box. See all white jerseys around that. Nothing there. Alessandro Allen gets a foot on this, and now Hobrick has it. Not letting the Anteaters get out of their defensive third. Originally were the Tritons, but Hobrick isn't a fan of his jersey being tugged and thought he was fouled. Yeah, it wasn't too much of a reaction from the bench as to why that wasn't called, so don't know how much that was a foul. Turning with it is Otoya. He looks to switch the field of play. This is Baruman. Baruman a link with Mejia. Back to Anaya. Now the Anteaters look to walk it forward. Ibarra sends it wide. Tritons are back in their shape. Going to ground was Habrick. Peters, does he collect it before it goes out for a corner? He did not. It will be a corner kick coming for UC Irvine. You see Dom Peters playing his last half of college soccer. It's been a good run for Dominic Peters from Wake Forest now. Here finishing his career out with the Tritons. Yeah, how great would it be if seniors could end with the win tonight? It's a good ball played into the box again. We've seen a lot of those well whipped in balls from UC Irvine here today. Yeah, and that, like you just said, was a perfect ball. I mean, si similar spot to where they scored the goal from the right side, whipped in. This time, Sonnenstein was able to get ahead to it, unlike the last one that just went over Sonnenstein's head and kind of surprised Serpa at the back post. Another corner incoming from Anaya. I'll play it short this time. Now here comes the ball into the box. It's in a good spot again. Hands on the head for UC Irvine. 
Yeah, something tells me that UC Irvine spends a lot of time doing set pieces. They like to go short, you see. They have a lot of few options, a lot of options where they kind of have an overlapping runner. They player on the ball can make a decision, lay it to the right foot, which you saw the previous play, or take a player on. And so it's something they've worked on on the practice pitch for quite a while. Here's Valverde now. As the Tritons look to put together an offensive attack after defending three set pieces from UC Irvine. Serpo play back to Sonnenstein. Sonnenstein will switch the point of attack to Adam Walker. Walker looking to pick out somebody through. Finds the feet of Valverde. Valverde does well to lay it off to Allen. Here comes Asa Gibson. Attempted to slide it through to Allen, but it's blocked. It's just that final piece the Tritons have been looking for. Allen takes it away once again. As Valverde flanked to his left, puts it back on his right. Cross shot. Yeah, I think he's trying to whip that into the far post, but just gets under it. And so may look like he's trying to cross it, but I think he's trying to whip that in far post for first shot. Yeah, the shot. UCSD. One of those. Coined by Salazizo, a shrot. Not going to say I didn't hear it from <laughs> another professional. I actually heard it from my from my buddy, uh, Benny Fallhyber. He uh, scored a goal with Kansas City off a free kick where, I don't even know if it was a free kick, actually. It might have been through the run of play where he was down the, going down the right-hand side and looked to cross it with his right foot from the corner of the 18 and just kind of floated to the back post and he tweeted it, you know, he tweeted his own, you know, highlight of that goal and wrote kind of Strauss question mark. And so, <laughs> so uh, there it is. That's where I kind of heard it for the first time and thought it was pretty funny. Well, thank you for sharing that with us then. <laughs> yeah, uh, feel free to free fill to use it. I haven't <laughs> trademarked it or anything, so. See Harburg taken down, drawing a foul. And here's an attempt for just a flat out cross. Looking yeah. to play a good ball into the box here. And this is about five yards back from where UC Irvine actually scored their goal. Captain Ibarra goes into the referee's pocketbook. He was yellow carded after that tackle on Habrick, allowing the Tritons to set up this set piece opportunity here. It's a hard cross off his line, but not even needing to make the save with Pruder as there was a foul against the Tritons. Sonatine always dangerous in those set piece opportunities. Saw him score just a couple of matches ago from a set piece. A little dangerous, Serpa trying to play it back. Didn't play it exactly where Peters needed it, but Peters does well to come off his spot and collect. Yeah, Peters did, did enough there. And even got to have a little bit of contact, which I'm sure he loved as he got up, kind of waving him up. There you go. This one a little bit easier for Peters as he waits for it to come into his box. 33 minutes left to go in the Tritons 2022 campaign. Still looking for a goal here. The trail, UC Irvine 1-0. A lot of pressure put on by the Anteaters on Serpa. Their Sonnenstein looks to lob it over the top. This is Allen going up for the 50-50. Like Kawamura is dragged down a little late whistle there, but indeed he will draw the foul. So here comes another set piece opportunity for the Tritons. Yeah, it was a late whistle and I was wondering if he was gonna blow it because I thought it was a foul as Kawamura did get tripped there. And another free kick in a similar spot. And Allen on it once again. The last two, he's tried to drip, drive it to the far post. The first one better than the second. Looks like it'll be Allen's ball to drive in once again. This one's more loft. It's been a good spot for Cerrito. It just slides right through the six yard box. Valverde able to stop it before it goes out, but then it's quickly dispossessed. Yeah, and that's a good ball from Allen. 
similar to his first one, just driven at the far post and had a few Tritons that almost got in the end of it. I feel like that had opportunity for a couple different Tritons to bring down, most notably right over the head of Cerrito. Valverde off the outside of the boot trying to go with the fantastic cross. Yeah, just couldn't get around it there. I see, you see what he's trying to do with the outside of his foot, just curl that, but this one's a little bit more bent from Allen, and oh, Cerrito just ducks his head there at the end. I don't know if maybe you heard a leave it type call, but that's me. <laughs> You're not I'm leaving going, it for No, anybody. I'm not leaving it when you got a, a chance in the top of the six with the goal in front of you. Maybe felt also that happen, tends to happen when you go up for it and you feel like, ah, am I going to, I can't really snap this one down. It's probably going to go over the net. Because what you don't want to do is have it hit off the top of your head and just be a wasted opportunity over when you have somebody sitting on the back post. Exactly, and, and that's my guess as to what he probably did there because Cerrito's not one to kind of duck out of a header there. Trying to put something together here again. Allen plays a wide to Valverde. Cross into the box was right to the hands of Pruder. So the Tritons asking more questions with 30 minutes left to go in the match. Yeah, and that's a tough spot. I mean, from where Valverde is, I, I think he needs to think about where he's going to put the ball and less about if the defender is going to block it or not. I think he's trying to just get it around the defender too, too much to where, yeah, he gets it around the defender, but it's just right at the keeper. And so in those moments, actually, if you're able to open up your body and look like you're going to cross it, but then just hit it right through the defender's legs. And, and, and you can do that on a cross, you can do that on a shot. Um, but it, it's open more often than not, and, and I feel like not enough young players, especially at the collegiate level, see that and, and use that. But at the professional and the highest levels, it, it happens quite a bit. Here's Cervantes. The Anteaters looking to answer back some light pressure from the Tritons the last couple minutes. Anteaters still holding on to that 1 0 lead. It was an early goal by Vicenzo. Good switch of play and good first touch. Anteaters coming up the left. Low cross into the box. It's cleared away by the Tritons well. Here comes a substitution for UC Irvine. <laughs> Atia coming back in. He came in for the injured Cervantes and played more of a holding midfield role. Looks ahead right back to that spot and he'll be paired with Cervantes there, who he had subbed in for in the first. Cervantes, good ball through. Took a deflection on the way to the net. It's out for a goal kick, but that was a good chance for Atoya, the number nine in white. Yeah, good little dummy there from to Atoya and almost got on the end of that. Fifty fifty ball won by the Anteaters. It's kept in play momentarily, but then goes out right around midfield. Cervantes, back to Mejia. Good flip over the top, but well done by Walker to head it back to Sonnens. It's 60 to Peters. Yeah, very cool, calm, and collective there from Walker just to give that little touch to Peters. That's a testy spot right there, right in front of your own goal. Yeah, that's just a it's just a reaction play. Sometimes it just it'll pop up and. You know, that's the difference between a player that has soccer brains and soccer intelligence opposed to someone who just plays for fun. Valverde. Triton's putting a little spell together. Through to Gibson. He's on side. Hard crosses out for a corner. That's a good piece of play there from UC San Diego. Yeah, and, and Gibson, maybe he could be a little bit selfish there. He gets into that spot. 
I mean, he's only a few yards away from the keeper. If he could just hit that as hard as he can there and maybe roof it. Near post? See, yeah, right there. Just, I mean, there's so many bodies and, and not enough Tritons there running in, but there's a clear path to the keeper. I think if he maybe has a go at it and then maybe even deflects and gives a different angle to your attackers, it's really tough to cross the ball with what looked like four anteaters blocking a lot of your players, so especially if it's on Gibson's left foot, just kind of hit it high and near post and or low and far, however however you see it at that moment, but I think a shot was the right play. Off the line, another good opportunity for the Tritons. That one just cleared away by the anteater back line. And UCSD is knocking on that door with 26 minutes left. Feel like something's coming here for the Triton. Yeah, if they keep pushing it at this pace, you think something's gonna roll in. Talk about a last man clearance. And it eyes for the back of the net. It's nothing falling so far here today. There's and a handball against Sonis. Yeah, and remember, I mean, not to this extent necessarily. I think they've been better in this second half, but you know, there was much of the same in the first half. They weren't knocking on the door quite as much, but you know, it got silenced, and you see here just coming off Sonatine's shin and goal line clearance from Cervantes there. You know, and, and like I said, they were doing this in the first half and all it took was a free kick from the Anteaters and they were able to get one. So they certainly can't just throw all the numbers forward. They need to finish out this game and give themselves a chance to get back into it. Baruman with a good cross. Serpa got a head on it. Felt like he was fouled. But instead, it'll be a corner kick for UC Irvine. Nonetheless, good clearance by the senior celebrating his senior day. Another set piece opportunity we've seen UC Irvine be dangerous on today. Yes, they have. And as much as some of these seniors are playing for UC Irvine right now, they have another game. They're playing in the Big West tourney. They're already on their way, so. Definitely more emotions, especially playing at home tonight for the Tritons. That opportunity just skimmed wide for UC Irvine. It was poor Shahidi getting ahead on it, but just not enough power behind the header to change the score sheet. We're under 25 left to go in the match. You know, Taylor, you asked me in the pregame, how important is it for a team like UC San Diego to end the season on a high note, but also end with a conference record that's above 500 and now after seeing the conference and seeing how many teams are stuck on four wins I mean if you can get to five wins in this conference that's that's more than a win for this program that's you're a top team and you had a top season and especially when you look at some of the games that they just kind of let go you know kind of similar to this one right where they're, they're playing at home they're losing a close match that probably they shouldn't be losing so yeah, it would be great for UC San Diego to come back and get a fifth win in this conference, and they have 23 minutes to do it. And it all starts with that clearance by Walker there. Is that had eyes for the back of the net as well, but Adam Walker came through in a big spot. Here comes some substitutions for both teams. Carvalho getting run up top as well as Hagen. Same substitution that Coach Pascal made in the first half, changing out his two strikers. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see with, with Cerrito and Allen being a senior, if they're going to get some more minutes, maybe the last five minutes to see what they can do, being that they're seniors and, and this is most likely their last college game. I say most likely because, you know, there's a lot of rule changes with the COVID extra year and whatnot, but I'm pretty sure both those guys will, will be moving on next year. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know who's a senior and who's <laughs> not a senior anymore. <laughs> if we watch a lot of these teams and people are on their sixth and seventh years, it feels like. Play long if you get a pension. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think Dom Peters has got his 401k. <laughs> it's been nice to have him here for that long, but it does seem like some of these seniors have been here for a while. And there's some, guy, some guys that you watch come in that you remember them from like four or five years ago on other teams you're like wasn't he a senior like <laughs> two or three years ago when he came in but it has been great on a serious note for the NCAA to grant 
a lot of extra eligibility for these players that have had to miss seasons, miss time with COVID, and really get them the full experience that they've needed at the college level because a lot of that was hurt with COVID. Yeah, and, and certainly was you know a lost season. I mean, whatever games were played that year for a lot of different sports in the NCAA, it was just over the net there. But I think it was a good step from the NCAA to do that because you know, unlike high school, where you know you're you're missing your whole season when, say, you're a senior, you know that's unfortunate that you're missing a whole senior year. But college, you're got a little bit more leeway, and, and NCAA has the ability to make those rules. So I, I think it was smart by them. And you know, in a few years, obviously, the, a lot of those players and it won't really make an effect. So uh, I think it was smart for if you were in college during the COVID pandemic. I think it was smart to, to grant them an extra year of eligibility. Comes a corner kick opportunity for Braga Monzo. Another San Diego native who's actually a transfer from Cuyamaca College out in East County, San Diego. Cleared off the line once again by the train. Seen a couple of those on both sides today. Ball's cleared directly off of the line. Not the hardest goal line clearances as they're kind of right at them, but if you didn't have that player at the back post, they would certainly be goals because they had the keepers beat in both situations. Approaching 20 minutes left to go, Anteaters. We're gonna put another attack together and really seal this game. A couple long attempts of late. This one by Mejia. Lockenbrook will come in for Ewan Clark. I still predict Lockenbrook's gonna score before the night's over. Maybe an off-the-wall prediction, but it's a feeling. I like that feeling. I'd love to see that happen, especially with him being a senior, first goal of the year. It's very fitting. Needs to get in the box, though. Can't score from out there. I mean, some people can, but I don't know if that's really in the range. Yeah, I don't know if that he has that in his locker, but... At this point, we'll take any UCSC goal to get them back in this and make this game exciting for the last 15 minutes. Here's Kawamura. Through to Hagen. Trains have done well, holding some possession in the second half. Walker plays it back to Sonnenstein. I really like Adam Walker's development this season from a player who didn't get many minutes last season, but was able to step into that center back role next to Sonnenstein and be another leader on the season. And he's someone that may have some eligibility to come back next year. Officially a junior, did celebrate his senior day, so we don't know what the future holds for Walker, if he's moving on or if he will come back. I'm sure uh, Coach John Pascal would love to have him back, especially with Sonnenstein leaving. You'd want to keep some cohesion there on the back line. Playing quickly are the Anteaters. Especially when you've got Asa Gibson playing. Coming back for his senior season next year, you'll have Walker. You'll have that left side of the defense. And also, we've seen Sean McDonald fill in nicely at the center back spot. I'm sure he'll get some minutes next year at center back as Sonnenstein and Walker presumably move on. For sure. And then maybe even a player like a Walker that kind of comes out of nowhere that has a really good offseason and, and has a really good preseason with the team. Coach John Pascal certainly 
has given those players chances. I mean, if you're coming in and you're performing in practice and preseason, you're going to get your minutes. And, and who knows who, you know, some of the recruits that, that are coming in as well, what type of players come in from there, they're always going to be given a chance as well. Also, Evan Wellerstein, a freshman, a 6'4 freshman from Hawaii. Presumably another look that Coach Pascal have somebody at center back with good size. And now you're starting to get some of the Division I recruits that are recruited as Division I players now um, yeah, here, just, here at UC San Diego. Exactly, and having that Division I status just you know, opens the roster up to get a little bit more talented players, maybe players that you wouldn't even try to recruit at the Division II level are now an option for you. So you have to understand that this is only their second season. And other than some of the freshmen and maybe transfers, a lot of these players were D2 recruits, all by good ones, but not D1 level players. And we saw that with a player like Andrew Valverde, who Coach Pascal tried to recruit out of high school, saw him at club, really liked him, ended up going to UCLA. Um, didn't really work out for Valverde at UCLA, but now being Division One, Coach Pascal can go back to him and say, hey, remember us? Like, you want to come over here? And exactly. Sure enough, here you see a player with, we see the talent from Andrew Valverde when he's with the ball, on the ball, day in and day out. He has that Division One top kind of talent, and now it's here at UC San Diego. Yeah, and he scored, like I said, a few key goals from off the bench, and hasn't been an easy road for him here either. You know, coming in as a big transfer, you know, there's a lot of expectations for you. That ball just goes wide. It's like Peters had the outside post covered. But when you're transferring from a school from UCLA, for whatever reason, maybe it's you're, you're not getting the playing time. You know, a lot's going through your head. You know, you, you probably had a lot of high hopes when you first started going there. And for you to step in there and then not get the playing time and then to eventually make the decision that you want to leave because you don't see a future there. You know, it's a player whose confidence maybe is down and, and kind of has to be rebuilt. And, and you saw maybe a different Andrew Valverde during the preseason and the early season. And then once he got that goal and then scored another one in the same game, I think over the course of the season, he started gaining a little bit more and more confidence. And Coach Pascal maybe saw the Andrew Valverde that he once tried to recruit. And so, you know, coming into next season, I think you're going to need an important player like him as you see him jogging out on the pitch right now. On comes Valverde, currently sits at three goals and two assists, all coming in the latter part of the season. Yeah, as his numbers have gone up, I mean, if you extrapolate those numbers over the course of the rest of the season, he's your leading goal scorer and, and towards the top of the assists as well. So that certainly can be someone that can put a five or six goal season in there. Like I said, that you, you're, you're gonna need, if you wanna continue to compete at the D1 level. And you all saw a pretty cool moment there when Valverde came onto the pitch, gave a high five, number 21 in white, Connor Manning, who's also a UCLA transfer. So seeing somebody on the opposite side, kind of going through the same thing. Started at UCLA, now have made their way somewhere else in the Big West. Strong play by Carvalho. Now looks to link Cerrito through, but Cerrito's in offside position. Yeah, and being a UCLA alumni in myself, I, I know a lot of those players that maybe just don't get the playing time, a lot of them are top recruits, top recruits that go there that just aren't able to break into that starting group or, or get the playing time that they wanted, that they maybe thought they were going to, you know, much like a Kentucky in basketball or or some of these top schools at Duke and, and whatnot, and then you see them transfer to you know maybe a mid-major school, and suddenly now uh, they're a big factor there, and they're starting to be able to shine. And so it's just a matter of time for some of these guys. Sometimes they never get that confidence back, and that's unfortunate. But for a guy like Andrew Valverde, next season is going to be key for him. More of a lofted cross into the box this time. Luke Pruder is able to come out of his goal and collect. A little slow to get up. Good size on Luke Pruder, six foot five. Yeah, and a young keeper, as you mentioned, a sophomore here, and he's been excellent tonight. Great feet. Yeah, it looks like a tight end in the NFL making that catch. It's an NFL style catch, kept the two feet in bounds. 
Didn't need to, though. Didn't need to, nope. Sonnenstein will play it back to Peters. 12 minutes left to go. This is Walker. Lack of days go past from Walker, but isn't forced to pay. Now carries it forward. And another lack of days go past, and this could prove costly for the Tritons. Good job standing up defensively by Kawamura. Then Sonnenstein clears it away. Took a while for our official Sean Wright to blow that one dead, but Kyle Moore did look like he was fouled on the play. That's been a couple times Kyle Moore has been fouled, and we've been curious whether Sean Wright blow the whistle or not. He has both times. Uncontested 50-50 ball there, won by UC Irvine. And this is Walker on the way to Gibson. Gibson has a little space in front of him. Finds Valverde. Valverde has no space in front of him, but looks to create some. He has the ball taken away by Baruman. Sonnenstein. Doing well to come over and slide it away from Means. It's going to be a good run for Carvalho. We'll see how long that ball hangs up for. Didn't hang up long enough for Pruder to let it come into the box, but he does the right thing and clears it away. See Alessandro Allen, as you predicted, Sal comes in for the last 10 minutes. And I have Carvalho, Allen, and Cerrito all up top. Coach Pascal emptying the tank with his strikers. Seeing if he can grab a goal here in the final 10. That's a great ball from Gibson there. A couple good touches by the Tritons. This is on the feet of Alverde now. On the back post. Harbrick going to the far post. Valverde's there, just didn't aggressively enough go out and win the ball and it's cleared away. Good pressure here from the Tritons and good crosses from Valverde and Havrick. Valverde knocks it wide to Gibson. Gibson to the shot takes a deflection. Excuse me, cross takes a deflection. It's out for a corner. Here comes the Projected goal scorer of the day, Cooper Lockenbrook, coming in on, during set piece time. Never know. Hey, this could be your moment. Looks like he's going to go over and take the corner, so looks like it may not be the moment. Yeah, I think uh, assist would be more likely from here. Maybe he hits a Schross that goes in the back of the net. Really, everything will come full circle. Coming in, whipping it with his left. Be an outswinging corner kick from Lockenbrook. Played to the front post, a long run on it. Takes a deflection to go out. Trying to have another chance. I feel like something's coming here for UC San Diego. Yeah, the crowd's starting to get loud. Starting to get into it. Just over eight final minutes in the 2022 season. Ball's headed away, finds Allen. Allen looked to put it back in on goal. Takes a deflection and it's gonna run out for yet another corner. There comes another cross that Luke Cooper Lockenbrook will send in. And this one will be in swinging with his left. Give me another name you, you think could tie this game up. It's on its scene on senior day. And I said that because he's really good on set pieces. <laughs> We're about to see a corner kick. Yeah, I could see. Yeah, I could see a, good, a guy like Allen maybe getting a goal here. A line change of substitutions. Coach Yossi Raz. Yeah, my guess is he's bringing in some defenders in here just to close out this game. There's one defender and Isaac Powell, also a San Diego native.
also from San Diego Surf. Familiar at all with the surf program? Yeah, they're definitely a top, the top club in San Diego, I would say, for, for years. They've expanded into different markets, but when I grew up, it was Del Mar Surf and a few other clubs, but they've been able to kind of take the leap forward here, and they have a great youth program that's developed a lot of professional talent and college talent in San Diego. A long throw in from Carvalho on the way. He does have the range to reach it inside the six, and he does just that. Now it's back to Carvalho. Cross towards the back post. Sonnenstein with a head on it goes wide. Just skims off Sonnenstein's head there. He's going to miss that mustache. <laughs> You're gonna miss header opportunities like this. This is something special that you see from Sonnenstein. Definitely a threat. And 6-4 on set pieces. Always a target. Not to mention everything he does defensively. That was a dangerous ball that may have ended up bouncing backwards. If it had found the ground, but Walker was able to get a foot on it. Caught out of position momentarily are the Tritons, but Carvalho does well to track back from his center forward spot. Cerrito in an onside position. Looks across with the left, and there will be another corner kick for UC San Diego. Five minutes left to go in the season. Man, this is our fourth corner in four minutes. UC Irvine made some subs to bring in some big boys who can win these headers on set pieces. Lockenbrook. That was it, Taylor. That was your chance. Don't know if he'll get one better than that. Not that that was an easy chance. He just connected really well with that. And if it wasn't for the UC Irvine defender standing there and taking that straight to the head. Would have been dangerous, as you see here. Connects really well with it. And a lot of bodies in front of the net. Can make it difficult for Pruder to see. It's one of those where you see the goalkeeper just end up flat-footed because he doesn't even see the ball come in. Somehow sneaks in. Yeah, if he, if he you know, could have been blocked by any of those you know, 10, 10 or so players in front of him. And yeah, you don't see it till it crosses the line. There's nothing you can do at that point. There's Lockenbrook again. Carvalho. Lockenbrook comes back, collects. Three and a half left to go. Here's Kawamura. Valverde brings it back on his right. And looks to find Cerrito over the top. A little indecision from Pruder. Not enough behind that cross by Cerrito. Yeah, I think he's just trying to wait it a little bit too long and just tries to go with the outside of his right back to Carvalho. It's a great ball from Valverde there. and You like to see Cerrito hit this with his left. He just... A little indecision there. Yeah, he just gets caught in between two minds and the ball kind of creeps up on him. But I think as he's approaching that ball, he needs to be setting up to hit a shot and maybe took his steps wrong. Tough ball, but if you're able to open up the hips there and really swing that right foot, you can put a good connection behind the ball and maybe score a spectacular goal. Not saying that's easy by any stretch. No, and, and if you're a confident striker, right, you're, you're confident enough to where you don't even have to go around it. You're just sprinting to it and, and feeling confident that you're just going to volley this with your left foot. Yeah, I would have definitely gone around Gotten it. around it, yeah. <laughs> Tried to hit it with the right. Yeah, I think as that ball went over the top, I would have just started taking that approach, almost like what a field goal kicker would do where you're just timing those steps before you're hitting it. And I think that's where he kind of got it wrong was maybe took two little steps or maybe an extra step in between there and the ball got caught in to where he couldn't really hit a shot at that point and thought a cross would be better. Oh, 
Latoya knocked down by Lockenberg. Referee says play on. Two and a half minutes left to go in the match. Still 1-0 UC Irvine. The goal in the first half by Noah Desenzo has been the difference. Can the Tritons change the narrative? They'll have just over two minutes to do just that. It's almost like the Tritons are playing 5-0-5 right now. Everybody either back or everybody up. Not a lot in the midfield. Trying to get numbers forward and trying to put something in the back of the net. Jake Means comes back onto the pitch. Numbers forward for the Tritons, here comes Serpa. Serpa makes the overlapping run, and it's played through nicely. Cross into the box, flicked on by Allen. It's knocked around inside the six. And Allen's gonna want that one back at the near post. I think he just, just missed the header there. He was in a tough angle, but he was just trying to get enough to redirect it on goal and just tried to whip his head on the ball, but just missed it. A lot of time being taken off the clock by Pruder there. Now 90 seconds left to go. Serp is trying to run this down right in front of that Irvine bench before it goes out of play. He does just that. Here comes Sonnenstein. Everybody getting forward for the Tritons. Approaching one minute left. Diagonal ball from Lockenbrook. Finds the feet of Hobrick. Now Allen. Officially now one minute left to go in the match. Hobrick has space over on the right. He's now inside the 18. Takes a deflection, goes out for a corner. Clock is ticking, 45 left to go. Lockenbrook. Head over to take it. Peters inside the box. Everybody up for UC San Diego. The fans up as well. It'd be nice to. What if Peters gets it? Grind a tie out of this. Yeah, Peters. That would be. Towards the back post. Sonnenstein! <laughs> that may have been the chance. The senior Sonnenstein gets a head on it. With just 30 seconds left. Would have been a poetic, poetic ending to the career of Noah Sonnenstein. This one's just blasted out of play with 10 left. Maybe too late for the Tritons. They'll get one final ball in, but it's cleared away by UC Irvine, and that will indeed end the 2022 season. UC Irvine heads to the postseason. They knock off UC San Diego 1-0 on senior night. Yeah, and credit UC Irvine. Grinded out another 1-0 victory, and 